I am Vinny Totterton, folks. Your good intentions have been stolen, but don't worry. I'm here to help you get them back. You may be soft and succulent when we start this process. But hang in there. Before long, you will be lean and mean. That's a guarantee. Just like the woman on the other mic, I'm talking about the beautiful Miss Anna Vocino. How are you doing, Pumpkin? I'm doing great. Happy December 27th, Vinny. Anna, we made it through Christmas yet again. You sure did. We, Another one's in the books. Yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about that because if anyone goes back and listens just a few days back to the Friday show that we did on Christmas Eve, uh, we were going to do the same old kind of janky thing we do where we do the 12 days of Christmas and I get yeah. it to add it all up and we talk about the amount of bird poop and all these maids of milk and, and everything else and all the fun we have of that. Um, but we started talking about something else and it prompted me to call Marie Totterich. Yeah. My mom. And, mm -hmm. and we were having a great show with her and it, it got me thinking that we, you know, I'm going to get messages about what Marie was saying. I'm going to see it on Twitter. I'm going to see it on Instagram, wherever I go to oh. social media. And I want to be very clear. My mom was going, oh, you know, we're doing, we have lasagna. One of my sister-in-laws is making a, uh, my daughter-in-laws are making a, um, uh, you know, the sweet potato pie. And another one is making, you know, the, the bread dressing and all this kind of stuff, right? And my mom, who at one time weighed, oh, I don't know, 280 pounds. You know, when I, when I got to her, you know, when she got hurt, a little over a year ago, uh, she broke her shoulder and she broke her knee and I went home to take care of her for seven weeks. She was probably at the time just north or just south of 200, somewhere right around there. Wow. And since she and my dad was a captive audience, they couldn't go anywhere. It was COVID. I was bringing all the food in the house. I was cooking most of the food. My dad was helping me out where he could. And I was taking care of these two people for seven weeks. I changed their diet completely the way they ate breakfast, lunch and dinner. And they kept saying to me, wow, this is delectable. This is great. Oh, my God. I didn't know eating NSNG was so easy. I, you know, this must be expensive. We've had meat twice today. You're serving us fish almost every night. Well, not every night, probably four nights a week. I was making my famous now called bachelor chili. Right. And uh, I was making up stuff because I was running out of things to do because I only Serena does most of the cooking around here. I only know how to make X number of dishes and that's it. And I was like, man, I got to figure out other ways to get my parents into this. Anna sent me like two or three cases of her sauce. She knew I was, I was flailing down there. And all of a sudden all this sauce shows up. My mom was very excited because down there, if something shows up on your door stoop from somewhere else, you're big timing it. As a matter of fact, she told me to leave it out front for a while because she wanted to make sure Joycelyn saw it. You know, <laughs> brought it in. And um, so, yeah, Anna sent all this, you know, her, her sauces over and I was using the puntanesca and everything else and making coming up with different dishes. And Lo and behold, I thought as soon as I left there, my parents would go back to the old way of eating. Right. But they were enjoying it so much. I remember for maybe three weeks or a month, once or twice a week, my mom would call me, hey, your dad's at the grocery store right now. What was that yogurt you were bringing home? Boy, that one was really good. Mm -hmm. Hey, you, we're at the market right now. That We're at the fish market. They, they have fish markets down there. Um, what type of salmon would you know, say? Like, well, you're not going to get that one at the fish market, but you'll get this, you know, and bring home some some uh, tilapia and bring home this and bring home that. I was giving them options, right? We were doing all of these different options. And my mom is now weighing less than she weighed in high school. She weighs 135 pounds. She's fit as a fiddle. God, she had that heart problem thing almost two years ago. They told me she was going to die. They told me she would never walk right again with the knee and the shoulder. She's doing just fine. She's getting around. She's doing great. And she's never been this lean. I just did a trip. She couldn't have done that trip two years ago. 
we just did the whole Natchez Trace, 445 miles end to end without skipping a beat. These people were amazing. And it's all because they started eating right. No other reason other than they're eating right, period. Right. So it's Christmas. And she was talking about honey baked hams. She was talking about, um, you know, uh, pudding, uh, not pudding, but bread stuffing, you know, whatever stuffing. Sweet potatoes. Right. And she didn't mention it, but I know there's going to be a pecan pie there somewhere. She talked talked about Bernardo's bringing in uh, some lasagna. And she talked about someone else with the honey baked ham. Why? This is a day. This is one day. This is one meal. Right. This is one get together where everyone's having all this crappy junky food. And to be honest with you, if I was down there with them, I would be joining in to a degree. I yeah. mentioned during the show, I don't like my ham to taste like it's got icing on it. Charred creme brulee. <laughs> exactly. If I was going to have a piece of honey baked ham, I would cut the rind of sugar off of it. As a matter of fact, what I do is I, I, I'll take three or four slices and cut the rind off. And just have it like that. Uh, if I'm going to waste any, any cal any, any, not even one calorie on a grain, it would probably be in a gravy, you know, one of these right. gravies where someone, you know, made a roux. That's where I, I, I won't be a stickler. Right. Right. Uh, and that's, it'll cause some inflammation and I'll feel, you know, a little weird. I might even want to take a nap or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's one meal and I'm enjoying it with my family. And I don't want to be the odd guy out going, I don't eat that. And I don't do this. And I that, 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 because someone went out of their way to make this. Right. Right. And I'm not going to be that guy. Um, hell, I live in ketosis 95% of my life. That 5%, fuck it, man, I'm going to enjoy myself. Um, and that's exactly what Maria is going to do. And that's exactly what she did for Christmas. And my dad, I'm sure my dad eats like a child at a birthday party anyway. So <laughs> it's not going to give him up that much, even though, look, he's lost so your dad. Your dad's not sticking with an SNG. No, he does to a degree. Right. You know? And by the way, I'm very proud of him because my dad's basically got an eating disorder where, you know, he he's addicted to food. He loves sure. sweets. I, I can watch my dad eat a loaf of bread because, he, you know, but now he's figured out, oh, wait, I can live healthier and I can live longer and I can have a happier time if I don't eat that much of that. Right. You know, so he curtails himself and uh, sure. he eats more, more fish, more, more red meat, more chicken. Um, there are big chicken people down there. I'm not, I'm not a, a big chicken guy. I, yeah, I'll yeah. have chicken, um, but they, they love their chicken. Anyway, that's the way it's rolling down there. And uh, um, what, what are you guys doing for Christmas? Well, it's, it's interesting. I don't I actually don't. I mean, we're recording this before Christmas, so I don't, actually don't have my Christmas menu locked. I usually do a beef, either beef tenderloin or steaks. And I usually do either. Well, I, I for years with the Tarquinio family, it was demanded that I make my scallop potatoes. And when we're at home now, I don't do that. I do the cauliflower gratin recipe, which I should have a YouTube video up for that. But I, it's at my site. Right, right. It's just basically my famous scalloped potatoes repurposed with cauliflower, and it's delicious. What's not to love? It's like cauliflower swimming in, you know, bubbly, crispy white cheddar and Gruyere and onions. It's yeah, so good. Yeah. Look, I it's not fancy. It's not a fancy dish. Right. But it's okay. one of the it's the favorite side dish at every holiday meal. So I used to have to make the scalloped potatoes. And to be honest with you, it's so much easier to do cauliflower because with the potatoes, you got to pre boil them and you got to peel them and then you got to slice them on the mandolin and then you get starch everywhere and it's pain it has to be cooked just right. Cauliflower, you just pour it all in the thing and throw it in the thing. So I'll probably make that. And then, you know, whatever roasted vet, I'll probably do roasted Brussels sprouts or ro the bacon broccoli. Yeah. It's not that different. We, oh, the big splurge that we do is we always do tamales on Christmas Eve, which is like a Mexican tradition in SoCal that we've co opted. We've culturally appropriated that for our little Italian household. Um, yeah. And uh, so we do that. And it's just a family tradition that we do. We get homemade tamales. And to be honest with you, when I eat a tamale, I can barely finish one because I'm just not used to eating that kind of bulk. Right. But I enjoy it and then I move on. 
Like I have no problem with it. And I also feel like I don't want to have to like, I don't want to have to explain like what you're saying. You don't want to go to someone's house and have to explain the way you eat and be picky and weird. Right. It just, it's just socially easier to not do that. I get that. And I'm also like, can we not, can we just not talk about diet mentality for one meal? Can we just sit down and have a meal and not, you know, it's almost like politics. Can we sit down and have a meal and not talk politics right. and not talk COVID and not talk diet ideology? Like, can we not have the vegan fighting with the keto? Can we just for one meal? Can we not have the low carb fighting with the low fat? I don't know. It's just, maybe it's just me and my vision for a, a utopia. <laughs> it's like we right. can sit and have one meal and not have to make it an issue. Even though our entire lives is about this issue. I get it. We're trying to help people. Yeah, but, but it's it, like I balance, you know, it's, it's a time and a place. And, yeah. um, you know, Christmas, you know, and look, most people would say, well, Thanksgiving is the big one. And they would be right. You know, Thanksgiving is the big one where the, you know, and but Christmas kind of follows. I would say it is a big one. Christmas right. in our household is a big deal. And, and, and Lauren wants the pancakes. And since Lucy's gluten free, he wants me to make sure I make my gluten free pancake recipe, which is very different than my grain free, how we make for myself. Right. And so, you know, it's like. So it's a whole thing, but I also know my body really well. And if I were to like start like, OK, it's Christmas, I'm going to start with pancakes. And my sister in law, we used to have champagne while they're opening presents. I was like, it's eight in the morning. <laughs> like, I can't do that. I, I, I can't, and I never liked pancakes. They're not my thing. I, I like a savory breakfast. So, but I make it for everybody. You know what I mean? So I, I never said that. Like for me, I know my body. And if I started the morning with gluten-free pancakes with syrup and a glass of champagne, I would die. Oh, hello, Lauren Tarquinia. Look at this sexy man. Wow. wow. Jeez. Look at this. We see this. Thank you, Lauren. Oh my God. I'm going to turn up the. You got to make him, you got to make him bring it in next time with, with an apron on with no shirt. Yeah, you need to have an apron on with no shirt next time. Yeah, just saying. No, and no pants for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I don't have a napkin, but I'll just lick my fingers on the air. You know, that whole drinking in the morning, um, whenever. It's so weird to me. You know, we're staying at Kristen's, so I don't know what Kristen's protocol is, but when we're at Serena's mom's house, uh, her mom's husband is weird to call him Serena's stepfather because they got married much older, right? And at, at any rate, he's a super nice guy. But around holiday time, he will do this thing where it's like, I'm having breakfast and he goes, Vinny, would you like some Prosecco? And I'm like, nah, I like my eggs without any alcohol. <laughs> and I don't even drink Prosecco. And, I, and then do they get offended? They're like, whatever, snooty, uh, snooty. I, I don't say that. I think that I'll just go now. Nah, it's a little too early for me. And and I know I'm being judged because it's like, well, you can't have a little Prosecco in, in the morning. And, and then two o'clock will come. Right. And they'll sit down and do a light lunch at around two. You know, it's like this kind of lunch thing that it, it's about one or two. And they'll sit down and you have to have that meal. And most times there's like, they they know who I am and how I eat. So sometimes I think they're making extra food for me that they wouldn't normally make. But there's always like these potatoes or something. And I'll stay away from the potatoes when I'm there. I was like, uh, yeah, I'll just have that meat. And, and they go, you, you haven't had enough to eat. And I'm like, no, th this is good. And they'll go. Uh, and, and at this time, they're passing around like the white wine. Right. Like, well, white wine is the is the lunch wine. Right, because the Prosecco was the breakfast wine. Prosecco was the breakfast wine. So they're going, would you like some white wine? I was like, nah, yeah, 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 yeah. more of an, an afternoon, evening, you know, cocktail guy. So, you know, I'll, I'll skip out of that because I don't want to drink wine. I don't want to have potatoes. I, I'm trying to stay as close to NSNG as possible without offending again. But then at four o'clock, um, the, the, the fireplace is being rekindled, you know, they, they use like I do here, they use the fireplace to keep the house warm. And uh, they'll break out something like, uh, you know, a scotch or a whiskey of some sort. And that's when I'll dive in with the one drink, right? right. Because it's the afternoon drink, you know, 
and I don't think that, like I said, I think this just goes on around Christmas time. And uh, so but you can never know if it's like an escapism thing, like we're going to start drinking early. I just remember going to college and being a freshman in college and dating a fifth year senior, which should have been my warning sign right there. Like, why are you a fifth year senior? Right. Bad dude. But they would start drinking and I, you know, for football games or whatever. And I, and I tried it and I, I would have one beer or whatever, and I would want to take a nap. And I still, to this day, cannot day drink. It makes me so tired. And in fact, when I drink in the evening, I basically have a drink and a half to two drinks until I know I'm going to immediately want to fall asleep. Right, it makes right. me sleepy. So that's why for me, it signals the end of the day. So I, I could never be like, yeah, I'm going to wake up and have coffee and then immediately have champagne or something. And I don't like champagne and Prosecco it gives me heartburn anyway. I'm very boring. <laughs> it's the same here. Yeah. But I, like I, I am like, I don't like, I don't want to give myself heartburn at eight in the morning and then I can't eat the rest of the day because I had bubbles that gave me, you know what I mean? I don't want to get sleepy and have to go right back. I don't want to take a nap at 11 a.m. That feels like I've just given up on the day. Yeah. I don't like that feeling. And so, you know, don't get me wrong. I have weak, weak points on other things. Like if somebody walks in and they are like, I made gluten-free cupcakes from scratch for you. I'd be like, oh, that would be a thing I would want to do. You know what I mean? So I have my own triggers, but alcohol is not one of them. Yeah, no, it's, it's weird because as you know, I'm not a big alcohol guy. So I'll have the four o'clock drink because I've now said no twice. Right. And then I may or may not have the after dinner, like the casual or whatever they call it. You know, right. where, but yeah, you know, the, no one's like drinking to get drunk. They, but it's like these, oh, you're supposed to have this with this and that with that at this time of year. And I didn't grow up with that. You know, my parents right. are basically teetotalers. And, you know, I'm one of the few people two. that drinks. I, me and I think my younger brother, Mark. It's will, interesting uh, that. You had Catholic parents who didn't drink. Yeah, they Catholics were, usually drink. I had Methodist parents. Uh, Methodists don't yeah, drink. By I, the I, way, I, Lauren wanted me to make the joke to you that this is impossible bacon. It's not. <laughs> it's impossible because I can't get any in my mouth right now. Mm -hmm. It's so mm -hmm. good. I'm muting so I can chew my bacon. Yeah, no, Anna, I would eat the crap out of that bacon right now if it was over here. I would broomski that bacon like it was some big titty bitch I was broomskiing. <laughs> motorboat and just bacon. I would just motor. By the way, this is Beeler's brand. Have you heard of Beeler's brand? I think it's no. out of Iowa. No, I have really haven't. good bacon. The only no sugar. Where, you know where I used to get my bacon from, you know, when I lived there. Right? I am so mad at Jim's Fallbrook Market. Why? Their Maybe. manager was so rude to me and then so rude to Megan trying yeah. to get the sauce in there. I'm so mad at them. I'm like, <laughs> I have spent so much money. Vinny has, but we have been promoting you guys on the podcast. They don't know that though. Yeah. He was just pissed because they kept saying, call back, talk to Cody or whatever at two 30 or two or whatever. Unbelievable. And he, did, and he was like, how dare you call me? I'm slammed. And we're like, well, you refuse to do email, which is something you could return on your own time. Right. It has to be calls. And second of all, um, your people said we should call back. If we shouldn't call you, they need to tell us that. Yeah, tell us that. Don't just keep stringing us. Oh, my in. God. And then he so he was rude to me, but then he was extra rude to Megan, which, again, I'm not OK with being rude to assistants. That is not OK. No, I'm rude to Megan because I can be. <laughs> you should not I'm, be rude to Megan. <laughs> I'm never rude to Megan. I know you're um, Anyway, that's but, yeah, Jim's had the best bacon, but now I'm mad at them. But yeah, once I, they carry I, the sauce, I, I won't be mad at them. Anymore. I've 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 purchased. If you add it up over the years, probably five cows and 20 pigs from these people, you know, just alone. All of my meat used to come from Jim's Fallbrook because they had the best stuff. Unbelievable. So, I'm so sorry you went through it, Anna. Um, anyway. You never know. Listen, they're stressed out. Grocery. I, I, I'm I, learning all kinds of things from grocery. Yeah. But then today I woke up to an email from a buyer who said she made the sauce. It's the best pasta sauce she's ever made. She made spaghetti for her kids. Best pasta sauce she's ever had. And she's thrilled to have it in the store. It's up here in Solvang. And so I was like, you know, you, you take the good, you take the bad, you take them both. And there you have the facts of life, the facts of life. Uh, you know, I've never seen that show. Really? I thought you would watch a show full of hot chicks at boarding school. I mean, hot chicks in Natalie. Anyway, go ahead. Hang on. <laughs> Say that again slowly. <laughs> chew, chew, chew. 
chew, chew, chew. I'll say it slowly. There she goes. She's I'm not done eating. Okay. Anna, hmm. is it the facts of life is about hot chicks in boarding school? Yeah. It was a sitcom though, right? Yeah, it was a Norman Lear. I, I, I got a watch. spinoff. Mrs. Garrett was the housekeeper on different strokes. And then she went to go become the, the, the dorm marm I guess at, uh, at the boarding my, school. It, it, it probably just missed my generation. Or something. I, it did. It was definitely, I was the target generation for that one. Okay. I loved that. Show. Um, all right. At any rate, uh, yeah, I'll, you keep chewing and I'll talk about this. Um, it used to be when I was a kid, at least for me, I, I don't know how the rest of the world worked. I grew up in the late 1970s, you know, coming of age and into the 80s when I was in college and what have you. And look, Thanksgiving was Thanksgiving. You would, I would either be home when I was in high school, or I'd go home when I was in college. And it was just one meal. You would go and you would stuff yourself at this meal. I remember in college taking a lot back with me so I can have food to eat. You know, it was like a boon. It was like, oh my God, I, I have real food now to eat for the next several days until, and towards the end of that food, you start going, okay, I have a little bit of this left. If I make some rice, I can stretch it into another meal or two. And you start figuring out ways because I was as broke as a human being can be when I was in college, I was making oh, yeah. this meat on my own. And um, I was extending meals and uh, no food went to waste. Um, I just don't remember this after e not Easter, after um, uh, uh, Halloween, I didn't remember Halloween being a big thing where all the candy kind of rolled into a month later with Thanksgiving, and then people would just go, oh, screw it. We, I'll just, you know, it's Thanksgiving. I'll just keep rolling this into the end of the year. I think it's the pumpkin spice marketing that launches it. Pumpkin spice I, this, that, you know, and the other it, thing. It's, it's all of it. You know, you can't get fat if you don't eat fat mantra that started right. in the 80s. And I, I just remember Thanksgiving being one meal and Christmas being one meal and then everybody right. was gonna get fucked up on New Year's and then boom, I didn't remember it, uh, you know, being okay, we're going to take one quarter of the year, basically, because if you start in October, I know. you have the end well, now it goes through Super Bowl and where you're from goes to Mardi Gras. Well, Mardi Gras was always its own thing. So but I don't I just don't remember it just being fuck it, we're going to take a quarter of the year off and just eat. And when you think about it, you know, they've already figured out years ago, that's when people started gaining all the weight they would gain for the year, and then they wouldn't lose it. And the next year, they would gain another five or 10 pounds and wouldn't lose it. Right before every year, people used to slowly get fat. Um, I think it's changed now because we live in this world of 64 ounce Cokes. I've always said when I was a kid, I probably didn't drink 64 ounces of Coke in a year. And now that's, you know, the normal thing. So people are just doing whatever, whenever we have um, food mates or postmates, whatever it's called, where shit just shows up at your door. Grubhub. Grubhub. So you guys here, here, here. We're, I know one day, probably in January, when we're going to get back to the NSNG 101s, because January is the perfect time. Not only does right. everybody return and start listening, but I really want to talk about NSNG on a budget. But let me just point something out. Every time that you give in and you order the Postmates or the Instacart or the Grubhub or the Seamless or the whatever it is where you are, it is so expensive, number one, because there's a surcharges in the thing and you should be tipping your drivers, by the way. Don't order that shit and don't tip drivers. Okay. Well, they got tips and all that just all included. That's the whole I don't thing. know, but just make sure you're doing it. Just look at your thing and make sure you're doing it. That's all I'm going to say. Number two, you people say it's so expensive, but then they break down and do that. Number two, when you order Postmates, Instacart, yada, yada, yada. Well, Instacart is mostly grocery store, but Postmates, let's say Grubhub, Uber Eats, you can't change your order necessarily to reflect doing NSNG. So you're going to get the fries or the starch or the thing delivered anyway. Really? It's really hard to say I want the burger, but no bun. And don't bring the fries. 
Because huh. you can put it in the notes field, but chances are you're not going to get that. You're going to get it. They're just going to make it. You're going to get it. And then what happens, Vinny? You eat those fries because they arrived at your house. Right. Well, you see, I, I didn't so even. I'm like, you're pay- overpaying. And when you're, and then you tell me that NSNG is too expensive. And I'm like, no, 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 no. no I can't have Without me. prioritizing money yeah. and prioritizing your time. Right. You have to do it. I don't want to, I don't want to get it. We'll get it. We're going to talk about that in January, but I just want to throw that out there. Oh, 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 by the way. So you know how the sauce is at all the lessons, right? And I finally got them to put it up on their web cart so that somebody could order, because there's still people in LA who don't want to go to the grocery store, right? And they wrote, I, I asked folks, they hey, hey can LA, you the, the rest store? of the country is going to the fucking grocery <laughs> store. I, they are. On board. But there's still people. And so I said, like, can you put it on for the, the online orders? And now the sauce is on Instacart through yeah. Lassen's. You want to guess how much they've put it at? I'm going to say 20 bucks a bottle, 18, $18 a bottle. Yeah. I literally shit a brick with rage when I found that out. Yeah. Well, if you guys yeah. knew how I'm selling it to uh, the distributor for a less than a quarter of that price. Yeah. So it, it ain't me who's making that money. Yeah. And it's not getting rich. <laughs> I'm not Instacart. making anything. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I just thought that was, I was like, Instacart, shame on you. Yeah. But look, that, that and lessons too, but that's how people make, that's how they make it. But I, mm-hmm. I, I want to get back to what I was talking about. Go ahead. Um, we've taken a quarter of the year and turned it into I'm going to do whatever I want. Right. Uh, I've, you know, I, my saying was always, it doesn't matter what you do between Christmas and New Year's. It matters what you do between New Year's and Christmas. And I still stand by that because yeah. that's the truth. Right. I don't care about your birthday. I don't care about Thanksgiving. Right. I don't care about Christmas, New Year's, and Easter, right? That's what that- For five is. meals from 365 days. Right. There are five meals. And, and, you know, there might be a couple more. If, if you live down in New Orleans, you have Mardi Gras. If you live where Sturgis is, you might go drink yourself to death. If, you, if you're going to a Super Bowl game and that's your thing, let's call it, hell, Anna, let's shoot the moon here. Let's call it 10 meals a year. If you count in anniversaries, birthdays, Easter, Christmas. One a month. Let's say one a month. Yeah, call it one a month. That ain't your problem. When I say between Christmas and New Year's, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying between Christmas and New Year's go hog fucking wild (laughs) for a week because when when you take that, then people are going to go, well, it's Thanksgiving over here and it's only three weeks until Christmas I'm just going to keep this party going for three weeks. Okay. Uh, now it's Christmas. And then you start looking, you squint a little bit and you go, you know what? I've screwed up for three weeks. New Year's is only a week away. My wife and I are going to go get drunk and fuck. So that kind of tastes that, you know, you, you can, you can look, I've always said we're never as brilliant as when we're justifying our own bad behavior. Right. <laughs> But see, this is what I'm talking about. Even with the the ordering Grubhub, it's that same mentality where you're like, oh, screw it. I'll just get Grubhub. Oh, screw it. I'm already off plan. I went to that party earlier and now I'm going to, you know what I mean? It like, look, that's what I'm saying. It's it's symptomatic of the whole time period. And I'm saying, no, 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 just the next meal. Just make something real quick. Make the bachelor chili real quick. You'll have that bachelor chili before you'll get Instacart. Yeah. Oh, I, I absolutely. And look, people, you know, when you start talking about money and food, it's like, oh, I can't afford to eat like that. Or I'll hear, well, Vinny, your you're third wave coffee, meaning your high end coffee is too expensive. Really, but you'll stop at Starbucks every day and buy that crap. Add up three cups of Starbucks or four cups of Starbucks. You've bought a bag of my coffee where you can have yourself a good 20 cups. So I don't want to hear that. The the financial discrepancy drives me nuts. And I can't tell you the number of friends that I've had who who will go. They'll say, I can't we can't afford to. We got some crappy mortgage. We can't afford to redo the mortgage or something crazy like that, where they're really getting screwed out of money. And we can't afford to do that. And then literally five minutes later, they say, oh, I take the girls to Starbucks every day after school. Right. And that's twenty five dollars of snacks and coffee drinks. And, and I'm like, well, wait, what? So that's every day. Twenty five dollars every day. Yeah. This is a friend of mine told me this recently. And I just was like, all right, so let's say all right, so a gasket <laughs> exploding. Let's, in my head. Anna, let's say your friend goes to Starbucks. Let's be conservative. There's two girls. 
Let, takes let, the girls to Starbucks, go, gets a coffee drink, right. a snack. All right, let's say it's 25 bucks. Let's say they stop four days a week at Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Okay. $100. That's 100 times four. That's $400. You can't, I mean, that's a mortgage. That's a car payment. I'm sorry. Yeah. By the way, I don't believe in car payments, but I get where some people have to do it. But guess what? If you didn't stop at Starbucks every day, and let's say your car payment is 500 bucks, but you paid an extra 400 bucks and you put on the check, this is for principal only because every car payment happens to be simple interest loans. They just do them that way. Simple right. interest meaning there is no prepayment penalty. Now you got me going into finances because I, I would love to talk about it. I could do day. I, I'm new Dave year, Ramsey. new I'm, finances, people. You know what? I'm Dave Ramsey when it comes to this stuff. So you got you got an extra 400 bucks right there. And I don't want to hear we oh, Mr. Moneybags over there. I can't pay off my car. If you have a car loan, you should be paying that off before you're buying your little darlings $25 worth of coffee and snacks every day. Because you could pay that car off within a year. Once that car is paid off, you could go back to your bank and go, Hey, I have no mortgage on a car because that's what it is a car mortgage. Right. And let's redo which, the terms of this mortgage, which is the dumbest mortgage to have because you're paying on something that's depreciating so much depreciation now you're over here with this mortgage that's bad on something that is appreciating so how about get a better mortgage on that and you can save money and guess what if your little darlings want something fuck it stop at starbucks once a week you made it to friday you made it another week we'll stop once a week so that's but not every bucks. damn day. That's a hundred bucks a month versus four hundred bucks a month. I could do this all day. I do this with. Oh, Vinny, please! Else. It it may the dis, the discrepancy of it all makes me crazy. I I when I hear friends of mine say they can't afford this, that, or the other thing, and then literally the next week they're like, "Look at my new four hundred dollar boots." It I go, yeah, you see, lost the the right to complain to me. Right. And, Anna, and it's almost the same way with food, too. It's like I've tried everything, but I refuse to do anything that you say. <laughs> and I go, OK. And I do. Don't complain food. to me about your money. I don't want to hear it. I'm sorry. This, I know that doesn't sound bad, but it's just really hard to like sit and listen to things where I'm like, I've made so many sacrifices over the years and I've made a lot of mistakes over the years, but I've, you know, hopefully learned from them. Well, and, you, but, you, and, you, and I learned you, at a young age to on. if you have a car payment, immediately put it in your head that it's a hundred dollars more than it is just immediately. Yeah. Like if you get that car payment and it's $350, tell yourself it's $450 and pay $450. And then as soon as you can pay even more than that, because you'll be shocked at how good it feels to pay a car loan off early. Not only that, I did that with my student loans too. Hang on, since we're talking about, because I'm going to, I'm going to carry this over into working out and, and food. Mm -hmm. Okay. But th this is all the same metric. You see, guys like me, and we were talking on the last show. Anna is me with the vagina. I'm Anna with the cock. And that's just the way. There we go. There's the other side of it that we weren't hearing. Yeah. So um, the bottom line is people will say, oh, Mr. Moneybags, you can just go out and buy a car for cash. Yes. Here's why. Because somewhere along the way, I realized that when I was buying a car every four or five years, because I was putting in L.A., 48 to 52,000 miles a year in the vehicle. Right. At some point I would have, and, and the way I did it was I bought a truck with a diesel engine. That thing was able to go several hundred thousands of miles. I paid probably 40% up front. What I did after that was double payments. I was able, you know, my, at the time my payment was $300. I would give them the $300 and another 300 written on it. This is for principal only. I paid that truck off way early, way early. Okay. And I know people are going, Oh, it was only a $300 loan. We're talking 25 years ago when I did this. Okay. You so can, was, you can, you can still a lot get of money. a used car for a $300 loan. Okay. The, the point I'm making is I put 40% down $300 after a 40% down on a $20,000 truck or whatever it was. Right. And then I paid it off quickly. Yeah. But what did I do after that? I didn't go, hey, I own this truck free and clear. Woohoo, I can go spend an extra $600 a month. What I started doing was saving an extra $500 every month, earmarking it. 
because when, and by the way, by the time that truck was ready to be sold and I needed a new one, I didn't just have enough money earmarked to buy a brand new truck, cash. Because I was saving $500 a month, that adds up really, really fast. It really fast. does. It really does add up fast, especially because I put it in something called a spider index. Yeah. I earmarked it, put it into a spider index. What are these, you say? This is the SPY. This is standard and pours. You've probably heard these words before, right? They just, that money goes in and it just accumulates. It accum it makes money. Your money is now making money to the point that when I bought my next truck for cash, I took that money out. I put it on a truck. I was still making more money on the rest of the money I saved. And what did I start doing again? $500 a month. See, I wasn't buying car notes anymore because when you buy a car, you're buying two things, at least two things. You're buying the car or the truck and you're buying the money. And that's the part people don't realize in life. You're yeah. buying the car and you're buying the money. They don't realize that that's where the car people make their money are the loans. They don't just make it on that. They'll make it on gap insurance. They'll make it on, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just all this other stuff. When you walk into a thing and say, sign this, sign that. So what I always do whenever I buy a car, I will always tell them, hey, give me a good deal on the car. You guys are going to make it up on me on finance. And when I get into the finance office, I just start stroking a check and I say, well, you're not going to finance this? Like, yeah, yeah, I thought about it between standing over there. <laughs> That's a good technique. I like that. And um, I, I'm just going to pay it off. I literally had one of them tell me, <clears throat> but you still want the gap insurance, right? And I said, gap insurance, gap insurance. You know what gap, I know you know what it is, Anna. Yeah. Let me explain to the audience. If you finance a car, when you drive that car off of the lot, it is not worth what you just paid for it any longer. It's lost value. Right. Yet you still owe all the money. You haven't made a payment yet, right? The gap insurance is if you drive it down the street and crash it, sometime in the next six or eight months, this insurance will cover the gap that you would have to pay because the car wasn't worth what the mortgage on it was, right? They tried to sell me that insurance on a car that I stroked a check for. Can you imagine? So, they, can, they were, I, can I say some things? Because this is, this is like, this is my catnip. Yeah, it's, go, go, it's go financial on. financial stuff. Because I'm going to take this, after we talk about this, folks, Hang in there because I'm going to relate this to exercise and the questions I get about exercise all the time. Go on, Anna. So I know you like to tease me for getting that BMW. Anna drives, folks, Anna drives a BMW. The 2015 X3. Oof. And when we were in LA, we uh, leased it. And because we pay it out of the corp, right? Yeah. So when it came time for that lease to be up, I actually am not a car person, as you well know, Vinny. So yeah. I don't like to be bothered of thinking of a new car to get every three years. It actually is a huge chafe to me. I have a million other things I'd rather think about than having to replace cars. And I like that car. It's reliable. I know it. Yeah. And the, and the, the residual value left on it was lower than the actual real value of the car, which rarely happens when you lease. But it did happen here. 27,000, but it was worth 32 or 33, right? If we were to, if I were to buy it off the lease, I could immediately sell it private party for 32, pocket a few thousand bucks. And, and let, me, let me tell you something else. Mm -hmm. You knew every mile that was put on the car. Right. You, you weren't getting something else that someone trashed. No, and, and I have, I have bought certified, pre, we got a certified pre-owned Acura, which we had with like six Acuras over the period of our marriage. Loved those cars, but this one was certified pre-owned. They, Acura dealership lied about it. It had been an act, it was a lemon. It had been an accident. And I, I was just like, that's kind of where we, I started leasing them. You could have sued. Um, yeah, I know, but I wasn't going to. So 27,000 was a big choice to make in our household. Yeah. And I said, here's how my brain works. 27,000 divided by what the lease payment was would be as if we had three, two to three more years of lease payments. Right. Right. So let's buy out this lease because it's a good deal. Now I know the car is going to keep going down in value. Now, if we sold a private party, we'd probably get 17 or 18 for it. Right. Right. 
Sure. Um, but it's been longer than three years. And so now to me, I go every month, I go this. And then what I started doing was what, exactly what you did. Put $500 a month into an account as if I'm still making a car payment. So I actually took that 27,000, but also made the payment because I was like, I learned really early on, if you go ahead and make these sacrifices, even though it feels like it's going to hurt, something will happen. Either you get, you just, I don't know, you get more money coming in. You just work your ass off and make it fucking work is what, is what I do. And opportunities will come in. Something will come in to cover it because as young married people with a kid and a car note and a mortgage and trying to be in a creative profession was really hard to go, okay, we have to take 10% away of our paltry income and start saving it. Yes, yeah. you do. Or it will never get done. And you trust me, do not want to be approaching my age and have zero nickels to rub together. You don't want that. Yeah. And so taking this stuff and doing it and just making that sacrifice. So I know you make fun of me, but now technically it's a seven, eight year old car. I have no intention of getting rid of that car. It's got 42,000 miles on it. That's it. Yeah. You still have a brand new car. I know it's a great car. I'm sure at some point there'll be, because you know how BMWs are when they get older to, to something will fall, but Lauren keeps up the maintenance. Yeah, the way, something with the computer is going to go bad. Whereas something with the computer work. will go bad. Something will happen, but I'll be protected like what you said, because I'll be ready for when that moment comes that it's time to do a new one. But I will drive this thing until it becomes not feasible anymore. And that's just, I would rather do that with cars because I don't like changing things up. Now, yes, there's, there's some uh, privilege in there. The fact that I am married to a man who likes to make sure the cars are taken care of. But guess what? He's married to a woman who makes sure that, that his, his uh, body is fed with food. You know what I'm saying? Your stomach like, is full. Yeah. There's, there's trade-offs to it. I take care of the inside of the walls of the house and he takes care of outside of the walls of the house. I, I learned that's, something- that's our arrangement. But when, when I hear couples fighting about c- cleaning the house or paying the thing, and I'm like, Y'all talk about it, talk it out, get on the same page. Do not keep fighting about this yeah, because yeah. it will, it will break you apart. The moment you're like resenting somebody because they're not doing the thing, but you're doing this thing, work it out. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I go ahead and relate it back to health and fitness, but you're, you're preaching to the converted here because whatever you can do to start socking away something for yourself, do it. I'm going to tell two stories. Okay, great. I'm going to eat a piece of bacon and mute myself. One is about a man named MC Hammer, the great MC Hammer. Uh, it was said at one time that MC Hammer, and this was way back, I want to say in the 80s, when he was a big deal, when he wore the parachute pants and he did can't touch this and all this kind of stuff. MC Hammer. <clears throat> made $40 million. And back in those days, $40 million within a year or two is basically like making maybe $120 million now, maybe 150 million. I, I don't know how that edges out. But MC Hammer, $40 million was a lot of money back then, the kind of money you can never run through. And then within a couple of years, he was completely broke. And because of the type of man he was, he never blamed anyone else. He at least publicly, he always had a smile on his face. And Oprah Winfrey did an interview with him. And she said, you know, MC Hammer, you, you, it's, it's reported that you made 40 plus million dollars. And he said, that's correct. And she goes, and it says now that you're bankrupt. And he Ooh. said, that is also correct. Those are public filings, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you know, and this is him in an interview. And I'm going to paraphrase what he said, because part of it didn't make sense to me. Oprah said, how did you how did you lose $40 million? That seems almost impossible. I mean, at the time, there was a movie out called Brewster's Millions or something where he had to spend a million bucks a day. And it shows how right. tough it is to spend a million bucks or something like that. And he went this guy went through 40 million in no time, right? And he said something to the effect of Oprah, men love cars. And Oprah says, okay, and he goes, 
black men really love cars. <laughs> mm -hmm. now, I don't know what that means. I'm not a black man, but I have black friends. They don't seem to have better or nicer cars than me. That we all seem to have about the same level of of car buying <laughs> etiquette. But according to MC Hammer, men love cars and black men really love cars. Mm -hmm. Okay. He, I don't think he meant he just spent it on cars. I think he meant he spent it all on foolish things that depreciated. And cars are amongst that category. Uh, I have a friend, uh, Adam Carolla, uh, who has a lot of cars, but he doesn't have cars that depreciate. He has cars that appreciate. And you already have to be rich to do what Adam is doing. He's got warehouses filled with basically spider index stocks, right? His cars just keep increasing in value because mm -hmm. Paul Newman sat in them, you know, and uh, he <laughs> raised them and everything else. That That's not what we're talking about here. I'm talking about when you go to a dealership, buy a car, it goes down in value. That's how you lose $40 million when you buy sure. things that depreciate. You know, when you buy spongibles, when you buy things that, you know, you're buying, and they just go away. I relate that to fitness when people say to me all the time, I don't have time, Vinny, you don't understand. You have time to work out, right? You have a point I only do five podcasts a week. I only run four corporations. I only do a, in the past three years, I've done three documentaries. If you ask my friend Adam Carolla, he'll say, Well, I got a group of people over there working on him, it takes me about five years to get one out. Right. I get it. Maybe I'm not that busy. But um, I always find time to do between 45 minutes and 90 minutes of exercise bare minimum per day. Right. There's always time to do it. I don't want to I, I don't believe you when you tell me you don't have time. I, I you're lying to me. And you're lying to yourself, which is worse than lying to me. I don't care if you lie to me, lie to me all day long. But when you tell me on the phone call, you understand, I got a wife, I got kids, I work all day and I do this stuff. You can't tell me that you, you're not picking up this thing, your phone, and looking at it for at least an hour a day. Can you consolidate some of that time and not have the phone in your hand? Can you maybe do 20 minutes in the morning before everyone wakes up, maybe do a little something on a spinner or something like that? And then at night, there's a floor, you, got, you have to have a floor, you told me you had a family, you must have a house. You're on that floor, you could do lunges, you could do push ups, you, you for 20 bucks, you could buy a pull up bar, you could for 60 bucks, you could buy three, put them in three different doorways as you pass by do a couple of pull ups. I don't want to hear that you can't do it. Because right now you're, you're not just lying to me, you're lying to you. And you know, to your point, when your friend says to you, well, geez, Anna, you know, my kids, we buy $25 worth of Starbucks every day after school. I don't want to hear that you don't have money to buy the good food. Look around. I get it. Some people really are scripting by. Right. And, and we're going to through tough times right now. We have well, we have people really scraping by in our groups doing this successfully on. Absolutely. Teacher salary, truck driver salary. Absolutely. Stuff that you would think like, oh, look, Cy and Marie, we were talking about my mom last week. They had four kids. Right. And they were school teachers. They weren't making a lot of money. You know, the, the decision was, does Marie stay home and take care of the four kids? No, she can make more money by doing this. My grandparents were right next door. They, they can parent us enough while my mom was doing after school, you know, uh, whatever they have to do after school. You know, mm -hmm. yard duty or whatever, and make sure kids got on the bus. There was someone there. We weren't latchkey kids. So I had a grandparent. I had old Italian women with babushkas on praying for me. Hmm. And we had Rosalie. Right. Who Rosalie had her own daughter. Karen's like a sister to me. Yeah. And, um, you know, when she mentions Rosalie's granddaughters, that's all Karen's kids. Right. So, I look at all this and go, I grew up with Karen because Karen would come to work with her mom. Her mom came over to cook for us and to make sure we got home from school and, and the whole thing. That was her job. And when we left for school and after Rosalie got Karen off to school, 
she would come over and clean up the house and get it, you know, that was her job. Right. She was happy to have it, because she can now send her kid to school. Right. By the way, her husband, Joe was a wonderful man, you know, they, they worked together. Joe worked at the lumberyard, Rosalie, they were like our other family, by the way, and yeah. still is. You know, you know, she's as old as my parents, you know, she, she's getting there. But that's the deal, man, you know, you do what you have to do. We can make more money by Ma reworking. And we can hire a woman to come in for a few hours every day to clean up and to make sure my kids have food. And then the grandparents, when they get home from work, they can watch us. Right? And it's just the way we did it. it, it everyone can feel well, I'm sure I'm sure it's that's not a mystery to couples now that it's like you have to, you know, figure out what's best for the fam. But like, it's interesting too when you logically like my friend who I was having this conversation, she wasn't a friend, she was a woman that I was she was doing my hair. Anyway, years ago, maybe a couple years ago, she said to me, she knew, you know what I mean? She knew that she shouldn't be going to Starbucks and buying the things when they couldn't do this other thing with switching their mortgage over. Like she knew, but the reward that she felt, the temporary high that she felt from being able to get the Starbucks treats every day for her and her daughters was overriding the necessity to do this other thing. And with New Year's coming around, I always like the energy of New Year's. We're going to talk about it more on the third on the Monday, the third show, right? About looking at those areas in your life where there are those disconnects and figuring out well, what is it that's keeping me because ultimately, you're going to want to achieve the big goal and not just like the immediate gratification. So she was literally financially using the Starbucks as a treat bonding wise with her kids. And just like the sugary, just the physical gratification of it. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was the whole package. And by the way, I'm sure that's what Starbucks banks on. They want you to do that. They want you to bring the kids every day and get them a treat. And that's I'm always shocked. Our business. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they're not going to tell, they're not going to tell you otherwise you have to, you have to, it's an inside job. And look, it's a sugar factory, you know, we talk about these kids getting too much sugar and these parents will tell me, Oh, my kid doesn't get that much sugar. And then they go to Starbucks. So obviously, they are getting that much sugar. You know, it's it, it, come on, man, it, it's, <laughs> it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult to change. And it's up to us to do it. So, you know, well, I think it's not that difficult to take the physical actions, but sometimes it's difficult to see that you're subconscious is ruling the day. But you can certainly look back on your actions and easily go, Oh, well, are my actions upholding this new thing that I want to do? No. Okay, well, then I got to take a look at what I'm doing. I'm trying to remember, make different choices. I'm trying to remember the name of the guy I was talking to. At one of my phone calls it was about a week ago, I might have talked about this on a different show with you. Um, but he said, Man, you know, I've been following you and Anna from the beginning. You know, he said almost the beginning, I read your book first. And then I started listening to podcasts and the whole thing. And I said, Oh, great. And he's like, it's incredible to see what's happened to you in your life. And I said, what are you talking about? He goes, when I read your book, you were a guy living in in a guest house somewhere, you didn't even have a couch. You, <laughs> had, you had a spinner in front of a television. And that's all you had. And I said, Yeah. And he goes, and now you know, you're living in Virginia, and, and I hear about this house you have and whole thing. And I said to the guy, You know what, you're right, I do have all of those things. But not much has changed. And he said, What do you mean? I said, I still have a spinner. And it's still in front of a television. <laughs> you know, not, you know what, Anna, I normally don't do this. But I'm going to get up and I'm going to take my camera. Okay. And I'm going to show you my spinner and then spin it around to the television. All right. So uh, you, you, you're on the mic. I'll be off the mic. You won't okay. I'm going to talk about Villa Capelli, you guys. Everyone should get Villa Capelli olive oil because it's the best olive oil on the planet. While, while Vinny's going to give us a little tour, you can't bring your mic with you, I guess, but oh well. I, I cannot. So as soon as I start doing it, break away from the Villa Capelli. Okay. And then, oh, okay. Okay. We're going to do it. Okay. Got it. I didn't realize it would be so quickly. Um, he's 
Oh, it looks like he's about to dust. You know, you're still on camera. He doesn't know he's he's cleaning up for you guys. It's really nice. <laughs> Look at his butt. He's bending over like that's a cute butt. Vinny, you can't hear me. You have a cute butt. What are you doing? He's walked over there. Oh, I see. He's moving it around. He's moving around. I see some chair railing paneling. Oh, there's the spinner. There's the top of the spinner. Wait. Yep. That's oh, they there's two spinners. Oh, my gosh. It's an embarrassment of spinners. Look at that gym right there. That's awesome. He's got the ball. He's got the spinners. There's the rower. The concept, too. There's that spinner. There's a fireplace. It's all very manly. We've got the paneling, the wood paneling. We've got the uh, open concept ceiling. Oh, and there's the TV. Hell yeah. That's awesome. It actually looks similar to how my barn looks. I should do a video tour of the barn. That looks awesome. Yep. We got it. He's got the whole gym in there. You got the weights on the side. You got the rack right there. And he's going to sit back down. There it is. And there we are. And now he's going to have to. Oh, there's the other computer. That It looks like my computer, my room. I have a laptop set up in front of a desktop. So I can really relate to what's going on here. Man, I guess I really am Vinny with a vagina. I'm just glad I'm not that hairy. Wow. I just gave an unbelievable tour of your gym. Oh, good. So I was just showing that. Yeah, yeah you know, I have a whole house around me. Similar to my barn. Same thing. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's really nice. I heat this place with that that fireplace over there. It's got one of these timberline wood. That fireplace is great. Yeah, it really is. It, and um, this is, you know, I basically live in this room. I work in this room. I did the movie in this room. I, you know, I'm on my spinner. Or I'm, I think you could see, did you see my rowing machine when yeah, I was? I saw the rowing machine. I saw two spinners, actually. Uh, no, it's just one spinner. The other one's a bicycle. But and, that you put that on the things and you can yeah, use I'll, I'll put that on, on the rollers. I, I, I have some rollers. And I saw the free weights. I saw the mats. I saw the ball, the TV. Yeah. And over here, I have more, you know, I have dumbbells. The rack and, behind you. I have oh, yeah. a West side barbell uh, reverse inversion machine. Oh, that's cool. You, can't see, you know, there's a lot of stuff over here, too. And, and my uh, hex bars and all that stuff. Uh, but the bottom line is, is you know, yeah. I have a lot more things because I'm living with a woman who likes to be a tad bit more civilized. Right. <laughs> but she's I, not slinging hex bars around. Right. I figured out I can't get comfortable living in a house <laughs> with a couch. And you, you know, you understand I'm not used to, I, I lived my entire adult life in an apartment or in a guest house with a spinner and a television. Uh, now granted my television down here is much bigger than it used to be because my eyes are bad. But I'm either on the spinner or on the rowing machine. If I'm watching television, that's where I'm watching it. Except for if Serena wants to watch a movie together, <clears throat> or like The Bachelorette, but this is my last season, I'm done. Um, but anything like that, I'll go upstairs. But other than that, I'm still the same guy. Yeah, nothing else has changed. Um, because I, I can't change. Uh, <laughs> she can only domesticate you so much. Is yeah, what you're saying. I'm like a cat that can go inside and outside. Yeah. Good for you. I know to poop outside, you know? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. We're really proud of you. Did you cover Villa Capelli all the way? Uh, no, I did not finish Villa Capelli. It's the best olive oil on the planet. You're going to want to get some. I don't know what he's putting on sale for after Christmas, but I do know that he's still got these gift collections. You can get the marinara, the eat happy, a whole bunch of Villa Capelli oil and a whole bunch of spices and salts. And it's under gifts. If you go to villacapelli.com, at least use Vinny. Sometimes I got to say, I have an uncle who's 82 years old yeah. and he still sends me a hundred dollar check at Christmas. Really? And do you know what I would use that hundred dollar check on? Villa Capelli. Hell yeah. Damn right. By the way, this uncle does not have any money and I keep telling him, please don't, you don't have to, but he just wants to do it. So I take it and I buy Villa Capelli and I enjoy it. Receive your gifts. Go spend some money on some Villa Capelli. Treat yourself. If you're really doubling down too on your NSNG, you're going to want Villa Capelli to help you on that journey. 
So go to villacapelli.com, get you that three liter tin of oil, plus some salts and some other stuff to make sure you take it high enough so that when you use the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, not with Wimpy Y, and you get your 10% off your order, you'll still get the free shipping. So go do that. Support Villa Capelli. They support us. And uh, that's that, man. We did this Monday show. Monday, Monday show turned into the financial, the, finan- yeah. the, the financial B. People ask us about that all the time. They'll say, oh, you, you remind me of the Dave Ramsey of fitness, but I'm also the Dave Ramsey of Dave Ramsey. You That's know? right. I didn't know that Dave and I had so much in common when it came to finances, but I've never made a lot of money in my life, but I've sure in hell figured out how to keep some of it. Um, and deep- Keeping it is is the key. And by the way, I, I use um, for, for because you talk about the spider indices, I use a company called Wealthfront and they basically use computer algorithms kind of like, or you could do Vanguard. Vanguard has a spider. Yeah. Um, I, Van, uh, Wealthfront does, and I don't, we don't get any money from this, by the way. There's no, but just check it out because they use computer algorithms to not only choose the index funds, but to rebalance, you know, because you got to rebalance because the stock market is really high right now. Everybody's just like, are we going to, is it going to, are we going to, is it, what's going to happen? It's going to correct. It's got to correct. It has to correct. So people are afraid to go in there, but that's, they, they, the computers are smarter than the people at choosing. That's why it's a balanced index fund. So Wealthfront is one that I use. I know there's a ton of companies out there. You guys can chime in on Twitter. Let us know what you like to use. Um, And, you know, and one day, one day we'll do the, uh, the real estate show. Yeah. Um, Whenever you want to, I'll I'll do that. Uh, I love it. Uh. If you like what we're doing here, go check out everything Anna Facino is doing there. You can go check her out on Stack Deck, Tweet Deck, Substack, Substack dot Substack dot. Tell them what it is, Anna. Anna Facino dot Substack dot com. This week there will be a new recipe out or a new video. I can't. I don't know which one yet because we're pre-recording this well in advance. But right now you can get the eggnog, you can get the sausage cheddar balls, which would actually make a really good New Year's um, party dish to make NSNG, baby. Uh, go check out everything else she's doing. Uh, she also has, how you say, um, a book. Go check that out. Also check out her her sauces. It's all there. It's all there. Um, for me, you can just go to vinnytotteries.com before you go to Amazon. Click through the banner. It puts a little coal on the fire, gets my train down the track. We also have a super fan page. And I do thank everyone who does that every single time. So thank you. Thank you. Doing that. Um, yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, so uh, but, 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 uh, what you else? and I want to meet back here in a half an hour because I just realized I had something due 20 minutes ago to my agent. So I'm going to go do that. Okay, we're going to let Anna go do that. Uh, so but, 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 but.